There has been an age old debate since the MacBook was released if you should get the base model MacBook with 8GB of RAM or spend a bit more and get the next inline model I suppose with 16GB of RAM and beyond. It seems that even today with the latest in Apple Silicon we can still find ourselves quite confused and I too was in that boat not too long ago. I've bought base model MacBooks and I've also spent a little bit more and upgraded certain models such as my M3 MacBook Air. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how you can stop wasting your money and buy the laptop that's right for you. First, we have to understand what RAM is and what unified memory is. Apple and a lot of tech YouTubers can throw around specs and acronyms and just make it extremely confusing for anyone that just needs a new laptop and wants to make sure it can do all they want with all the fluff cut out. So, on a normal computer, you have your CPU, which is the central processing unit, or the brain, and you have the GPU, the graphical processing unit, or the eyes. Think of the CPU as doing all the Excel work, the documents, and the GPU helping you play games or render videos. They are both separate things and they both have their own versions of RAM, which if you didn't know is an acronym for Random Access Memory. RAM is a temporary place for things to live while they are processing, unlike SSDs or HDDs, which is solid state drive and hard disk drive, which holds storage until deleted or overwritten. Once you turn off your computer, everything that was living in RAM is wiped. This allows RAM to be incredibly fast and efficient with the CPU and GPU being entirely separate and having their own versions of RAM they never have to dip into each other's and the only time they communicate is if they need something from each other. Now enter Apple Silicon. We're now on the M3 chip for the MacBook Air and recently the M4 chip for the new iPad Pro. Apple Silicon are known as SOC or system on a chip. Where we talked about normal computers having the CPU and GPU separate, Apple have actually combined them both into one chip, along with a load of other things, hence the name system on a chip. And yes, you guessed it, they have also combined the RAM that they both use, which we now call unified memory. There are multiple great benefits to this, such as being closer together, that data can flow freely and quickly, the CPU and GPU being able to see the data and interact and essentially cutting out the middleman. However, there are some drawbacks, and this is what will help us decide on the model that we you need. The biggest of which is swap memory. Okay, forgive the rudimentary diagram here, but essentially to get across what swap memory is, I've drawn out these four stages of kind of how it works and why you need to know what swap memory is, especially when it comes to choosing a base model MacBook. So we start up here in step one. You've got eight gigabytes of RAM, it's now full with a load of data. This is where swap memory comes in. So your operating system identifies unused memory Essentially, if you've left some Chrome tabs or Firefox tabs open, it knows you're not using that for a certain period of time, so it identifies that as unused memory. Moving on to step three, it then takes that unused memory and it moves it to your SSD or hard drive, essentially your, your storage that's built into the computer. So in this case, we'll take it as 256 gigabytes as a base model. And what it essentially does is it partitions a small bit of the hard drive or SSD in this case to hold that unused memory. Then moving on to step four, it brings new data into RAM. So programs don't crash essentially and so everything runs smoothly. So your Firefox or Chrome tabs are sitting over here and the new data is working away as normal while this is all still full. Now what happens then is this will constantly swap. So depending on what you're doing and that's kind of where the issue lies. You have a 256 gigabyte hard drive and now you have a partition built in that is swapping between your RAM and so on. And you also have your operating system, which is stored in your hard drive. You have your games, you have your videos, you have whatever, your photos all on your, your laptop. And there lies the problem. Whereas if you had 16 gigabytes of RAM, the data wouldn't be full, at least as quick. And therefore you wouldn't need to even engage swap memory. It would just work from the RAM that it has available. So look, I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And once you take into account the operating system file size and potentially whatever you may use in swap memory, along with whatever files you may store on the computer, the 256 gigabyte base storage really starts to disappear quite quickly. Look, the base model is fit for 80% of the people looking at MacBooks. I did four years of my computing degree with a base model MacBook Pro, and that was running virtual machines, coding, and running emulators for dev environments. Now that doesn't mean it was particularly smooth, especially towards the end. That was on the old Intel chipset. And with the latest silicon, I have no doubt that me from the future would have had a way better experience and time using the base model M series laptop. 
That said, if you know you're going to be throwing above average workloads at the laptop, I'd recommend at the minimum upgrading to 16 gigabytes of RAM. And if you have the extra money lying around, it's no harm upgrading the storage to 512 gigabytes. Past that, you should look into having external storage as it's much more affordable and will do exactly the same job. If you're someone that will predominantly use Chrome, YouTube, basic games, basic video editing, document creation, presentations, and the list goes on, the base model is more than enough and you will have absolutely no issues there. There is also something you should keep in mind and that's the fact that a MacBook isn't and shouldn't be thought of as a throwaway item. You should really be thinking of what kind of lifetime you wanna get out of your device and if it is like five years or more, I really think you should be thinking about your initial investment a lot more as it will pay off in future. That said, if you'd like some fresh wallpapers to make your new Apple device look fantastic, check out the link in the description below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.